Hello, in this video we are going to look at how to calculate the moving average in Excel. Now the moving average is sometimes referred to as the rolling average and in this example I want to focus on a seven day rolling average. Now here in the UK we see this quite a lot at the moment in the news graphs such as this showing us the seven day average. Now for this tutorial I have the vaccination data on screen from the 10th of January this year to the 22nd of January as used in that graph and we are going to calculate that seven day average and the formula we use will move. It is a moving average so if we were to add the next day's vaccine data and then the following day's vaccine data it will always be showing us the last seven days average and this excel formula can easily be adapted to whatever time frame you need for your moving average for example a 14 day moving average so let's get to it cell D3, we are going to use the average function in Excel. And we need the last seven values. And for that to update and roll as this table's data increases, or maybe even decreases. Now the data we are using is formatted as a table, and that table is named data. So we're going to use table references in this formula, now there's a few approaches to get this dynamic last seven values but possibly the easiest approach is to use a function named offset. Another good one is index but it is a little bit more involved. So let's go with offset. It will prompt us for a reference that is a starting reference and I'm going to provide cell B2 which is the first value for this tables column. And I'll make that absolute and put in a comma. And this really here, this rows argument, this is the big one. This is where we need to find our starting point, our first value for the last seven dates. So I'm going to use the rows function of Excel and I'm going to feed that the data table to ask how many rows are in that table we can see there's 13 rows. Once we've calculated that, we will subtract seven from that value. Continuing with this function, the next argument is columns, and we do not want to move any columns. We're staying in column B, as indicated by our starting reference. So another comma brings us to the height and this is the other big question for us. It's an easy answer though, it's seven, because we want seven days. And then we can simply close off that function, that is done, and also close average, that is done. So from cell B2, calculate how many rows are in the table. The answer to that is currently 13, but obviously that will grow. Subtract seven from 13, that gives you six. Offset from cell B to six rows, that brings you to row eight, and from there, seven, seven cells. And then that is fed to the average function to provide our answer of 328882 if we hide those decimals and round that up. So if I select that value, let's format it and remove those decimals and we have the same answer as provided in that graph. So that is our seven day moving average. Let's just test it working. If I was to add a new row of vaccine data here, 23rd of January, 2021, and let's just make up a figure and say we did 340,000 and you can see the value in cell D3 change. 
It's now working from row nine to the bottom, the last seven. If we wanted some proof of that, I can just click in a cell, fire up an average function and just select those seven. And this is the result we should be getting. And that is the result we are getting. So that is how we can calculate a moving average in Excel. I hope you found that video useful. Please subscribe to be notified about the latest Excel videos from this channel. Please take care and I'll see you again soon.